This is the Horse Radio Network. Rick Wallace. And I have John Holly here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross-country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility, and so everything's set up very conveniently. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show, brought to you as always by Horse Trailer Pros. Really excited to be here, excited that we're uh, brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. If you ever have any issues with your trailers, need some maintenance done, those are the guys to give a call to. Hey, they can also clean the mean house, the other little company they have. That's right, Tidy Home Pros. You got it. Well, I'm glad to be here. Another week in quarantine. I know we're all making it. Look, I talk to you more than anybody in the whole entire world now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Every every morning, it's our morning ritual. I give you a call, yes. see what's going on, check it out. Yeah. yeah. So things are going good for you? Yeah, things are great. Things are great. Um, just excited, uh, I guess, pleased to be on my farm and dealing with my horses and kind of realizing how lucky we are. Right. And I know we, me and you, have been working with Joel, EQTV, and also our partner in the John and Rick show to kind of mesh our new format together with the Skyping and everything that we do to put it all together. And we, what a producer he is. We get, we are so proud to have him on board. Yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting to have him. And I was kind of laughing because when we started this adventure, um, it has completely morphed and changed. And then we finally thought we had it all finely tuned in our studio and everything was ready to go and we'd have some consistency. And then we got hit with this virus. And I don't think we've done more than two shows in one so, format. I think you might be right. We're just yeah. going to be called the moving show show. Yeah. yeah, but that's all right. We're excited okay. to be here and super excited. We have Joel to keep organizing all of this for us. So thank you very much for that. What's uh, in the news now? What are we doing? What's coming up on the episode six? Well, episode six is going to be a great one. We've got Leslie and Leslie law coming on the laws. Yeah. And then we also have, um, Buck Davidson. I got to sneak over to Buck's place and take a little tour around before the stay at home order came in. So we're going to show that. And, uh, then I also am excited because in the last segment, we've got David O'Connor on. All right. David O'Connor and David just today. I got my chronicle and you know, it was supposed to be the chronicle week for the preview for Kentucky. We're all sad that Kentucky's not happening, but they brought back historical um, things that happened at Kentucky and, and great horses. And he's on the cover with custom made. It's a great article. And the whole, the whole chronicle is pretty cool to look at because it brings back a lot of memories for a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. No. So we're excited. We get to talk to David about that here shortly. So, um, That'll, and that'll stay, as well. stay with David because we test him on the FEI thing. Yeah, exactly. We're going to ask David all about what this whole FEI online schooling thing is all about that everybody's pretty wound up about right now. Um, but before we do that, I actually got to sneak over Rick and talk to my friend Peter Gray, our friend Peter Gray, and he gave us a little um, insight as to what he's been doing. So let's take a quick peek at that. Great. Was Paul there? Paul was there. I didn't get to actually see Paul too closely. We were trying to listen to the social distancing thing. <laughs> Excuse me. So I waved to Paul. Did he I hold a sign up like this and say, this is my word of the week? Or uh, day? Word of the day. Yeah, I actually, I always check on Facebook for the word of the day. So um, okay. I had gotten the word of the day and I, I do every day. Make sure you check out Paul's Facebook well, and get your word of the day. I think the word of the day when you were over there was stellar. Stellar. And it was stellar. So let's go check it out. Okay, let's go. I'm here with Peter Gray, five-star eventing judge here at his farm in Florida. And just wanted to catch up with you, Peter. Thanks for letting me come out. Um, wanted to talk to you a little bit first about your own horses. I know you've got a really nice dressage horse and you were down in Wellington for the winter. Obviously, everybody's dealing with this virus and the quarantine differently. How has it affected you and your own personal competition horses? Well, yes, I did have uh, my FEI horse in Wellington, and also a young six-year-old was down there, too. 
uh, the competition season obviously came to a grinding halt, so I brought them home and uh, actually really enjoying the training every day without the, uh, the pressure of going to a competition. And actually, John, I've seen this in a couple of students of mine. They seem to be really taking in the training better without uh, the pressure of an upcoming competition. So that's been kind of interesting to observe. But my own horses are here. I'm uh, carrying on with the training and uh, just working on some small details that uh, needed working on and having a good time. Yeah, I have to say I've noticed it myself when I'm not stressed about having to uh, have the perfect half pass or flying change and I can work on the quality of the paces. They do go a bit better, don't they? Well, they do. And I think there's time that, okay, today we're just going to work on these two topics and not sort of run through the whole gamut of exercises and try to do everything in one day. So I think it's a good time to reflect on your horses and where you're at and where your weaknesses and training are. Right, right. Now, that's great advice. Um, now... Obviously, like I said in the beginning, you're a pretty well sought after judge. And I know that you've probably had some competitions to go judge planned that haven't happened yet. So how has that affected you um, with your profession in trying to be a top international judge? Well, like everyone, everything's come to a grinding stop uh, for the next three months. Um, I had a particularly busy uh, schedule of competitions to judge, which John, I absolutely love. People say to me, do you love judging and I said uh, yeah it's absolutely amazing um, and they look at look at me like I have two heads but yeah something I really enjoy and I'm very passionate about it and I want to improve and be one of the really good ones which takes a lot of work uh, actually as a side note one of the things that um, I have been doing in the time off is would you believe we have to do exams as judges now they have a competency test for FEI judges Wow. By the way, I dropped out of university years ago because I hated do exams, and here I am, still still doing exams. So, yep, I did my FEI one. USEF also has exams that we have to do, so I've been catching up on them. And uh, one of my favorite pastimes is to do YouTube educational videos, whether it's jumping or dressage or how to train certain things in gymnastics or PFs or flying changes. Uh, it's something I love, and I'm find, I finding myself with time to really explore those uh, areas of furthering education. So looking for videos like that, or do you post videos yourself? No, I don't post. Maybe that's something you can do for me in the future, but uh, <laughs> I go on YouTube and just search them. Cool. Search different topics and uh, try to educate myself further. But yeah, going back to the schedule, no teaching, no clinics. Uh, we're taking this uh, health crisis very seriously. We're very isolated at our farm. You're the first one that's come through the gates, to be honest. Um, we're being vigilant about this. We've got to somehow stop uh, stop the curve, flatten the curve. So we're doing our part and staying and hopefully staying safe. Yeah, no, um, I know we all appreciate that. Everybody's trying to be safe and um, I do appreciate you letting me come out here. We've obviously kept our per, uh, preferred six foot distance or recommended six foot distance from each other. Um, and I appreciate you letting me come out here and interview you uh, about all this. I know everybody's interested in sort of how this is affecting the sport. Everybody seems to have a different idea of when we're going to get back, and I think really the answer is we don't know, do we? We just don't know, and we just have to be uh, mindful in the in the meantime and um, and be safe. All right. Well, Peter, thanks for letting me come out, and um, we'll talk soon. Thanks for joining us. All right. So that was exciting to get to go out there. It was fun to kind of sneak over and see Peter, and uh, yeah, glad we got that. Cool. Yeah, glad we got that done before. Um, we weren't allowed to anymore. And what was kind of funny, I thought, was that Peter at the end there was talking about how he didn't actually do any of the YouTube videos himself. He liked to go on and check them out, but he didn't produce any. And since then, he's gone ahead and started producing them. Um, so I don't know if you got to see it or not, Rick, but if you video your test, you can send it into Peter and he'll judge it for you and send it back to you. And it was I did it. It was super helpful. Well, good. Are you going to post that? I did actually. Uh, oh, did it's you? on Facebook. You talk to me every day, but you don't obviously check my Facebook, which is pretty hurtful well, to be know, honest. Sorry about that. I'll start looking. Yeah, start looking. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, I did. So I took um, took a video of me riding the advanced A test on Dushi Terma and sent that into Peter, and he judged it. And you know, it, getting to watch the test from the angle that the judge sees while listening to them score it and give you comments was incredibly helpful. And so. 
you know, I sent him an advanced test and I sent him a training level test and he did them both really well and judged them both with as much effort. And um, I think for anybody who's sort of sitting at home, getting a little bit stir crazy, wondering what they can do, that's fun. You know, that that might be something that you can that you can do. And it's not expensive. I think it's like 30 bucks and you send them in and he'll judge it for you. Wow. That's just, I'm going to have to do something like that. I would have to come up with a dressage ring, but we can do that. Yeah, you so, just set up some show jump poles. Yeah, we, we've got all that. I just don't have the letters. But right. Well, well, whatever. It work. It'll go a little late at A. Right. right. Exactly. I think uh, I think Peter will be fine with it. Um, What's going on with frangible pins? I think a lot of exciting stuff's happening. Yeah. So we're actually, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to tell everybody about this. We, um, got a matching grant and we just made the announcement last week with uh, the Manton Foundation, which is an incredibly generous foundation who wants to want to do or, or told us they were going to, and they did come up with matching funds up to the $500,000 goal that we set. Wow. That is incredible. And yeah. So with the GoFundMe effort that we've already done and the money that has been donated directly to the USEA Foundation for safety for the frangible fence fund, we had, I think, just a little over $100,000, like $103,000 or $106,000. And the wow. Manton Foundation is doing matching funds along the way, sort of benchmarks. And so the first goal was $100,000. So the day that they made this announcement or that the USEA and the Manton Foundation made the announcement, the Manton Foundation wrote a check for $100,000 and sent it to the USEA Foundation. So we now have 200 grand, a little over, sitting in the USEA Foundation. That is amazing. And I know, you know, February 29th is when we lost Kate Morrell and Carrie on at uh, Rocking Horse. And I know a lot of effort was being made with frangible pins before, but this, you know, really has brought more light to it as well. And I know we're coming up under two month anniversary of that tragic accident. And I just hope that we can carry on this momentum for the frangible pens using her horse's name is a really uh, phrase for what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you kind of brought that up. Um, I think it was on the last show actually kind of popped out and we thought that's a really good one. So yeah, for sure. We all need to carry on with the fundraising and keep it going. It's exciting because now we've got to raise another $50,000. That's our, our first, goal or our next goal, I guess, is get another $50,000 so that we can get that next $50,000 from the Manton Foundation. Um, and I think one thing that's really important for everybody to know is that that money isn't just sitting in the foundation collecting dust. Um, there's already been meetings. There is a formula that is going to be released this week that will give events a way that they can that they can apply for this money. So each event is going to be able to go up through the preliminary level and up is going to be able to apply to the USEA Foundation to get a frangible kit and a grant to be able to um, build these jumps. So they the goal is that when we have our first horse leave the start box, after this coronavirus pandemic, we want these fences to be on courses. And how many that's going to be, I don't know, because we don't know when we're going to be back on course. But that money is not going to sit there and wait to see how it's going to get sent out. It's going out as quickly as we can. And those fences are going to get built. And the goal is that when the first horse leaves the start box, we want that those fences to be already built and be started to be out on the course to make things safer for everybody. Well, I think that's a great goal. And we're going to have the, the laws on next to uh, talk about some more things on this because Leslie, Mrs. Leslie Law is on the, is running the committee. Yeah. So Leslie, she is on my cross country safety subcommittee with the USCA and one of the things we did is we went and put a couple working groups together. So actually Leslie led one of those working groups and Sarah Broussard led the other. And they did some really hard work behind the scenes to come up with some um, some ideas as to how we can improve safety because it's not just a, a one answer fix, right? It is so many little pieces that need to be done to improve safety in the sport. And the frangible fence 
fundraiser and frangible fences on courses is just one piece of it. Um, there's some other stuff that needs to happen as well. And so Leslie's done a lot of work on that and I'm going to kind of leave it to her to tell us what she's done. Um, but it came through our committee. We approved it. It's been sent on to USEA for them to look at it. And I think, um, I'm really excited about what's, what's been going on. So let's, uh, let's take a break. And okay. when we come, when we come back, we'll have Leslie and Leslie on and, we will uh, talk to them about a bunch of stuff. We'll talk about their horses, what they've been doing. We're going to talk about safety and um, get their thoughts on on what they've been doing to keep busy during Corona time. I think uh, I'm pretty sure they've been doing a lot of Mario Kart, actually. I've been seeing that. Let's ask some questions about that when we get them on. All right, let's do it. We'll be right back. Sweet Dixie South is an equestrian facility built for the lifestyle of the vendors of all levels. Whether you are coming to Ocala for the entire season, a week, a month, or a year, this beautiful 160-acre farm is the place to settle in and enjoy your time with horses. They offer a full cross-country course with two water features, banks, ditches, an amazing footing to gallop, a spectacular all-weather footing ring, large grass jumping fields, and dressage rings. Located in the rolling hills of North Marion County in Reddick, Florida, Sweet Dixie South has 100 stalls and numerous paddocks, apartments, a line of camper hookups, washer and dryer amenities, as well as common areas to complete your experience during your stay. Under the ownership of Mike Campbell and the management of Can Do Joe Adams at Top Rail Tech, Sweet Dixie South has transformed into a premier eventing training facility in Florida. Go to www.sweetdixiesouth.com for more information. The equestrian life has big highs, heartbreaking lows, and so many moments of self-doubt. From CCI 5 Star to Starter, every rider needs a support system and a cheering section. A care package filled with equestrian goodies can be the perfect way to celebrate, congratulate, or commiserate. Let Present Pony do the work so you don't have to miss an opportunity to express your love and support. Jump for Joy USA has what you need for your private farm or recognized competition. Our jumps are no maintenance, easy to move, and affordable. No scraping or painting necessary. We offer jump stands, wings, fillers, water trays, and more. Poles are wood-filled and available in four weights and lengths. And we now offer octagonal poles. Our cross-country portables and brush jumps are extremely useful and have been used for training by the British eventing team since 1990. Easy to move from the arena to the field and no tractor required, so you can change your setup often. We ship coast to coast in the USA and Canada. Visit our website, jumpforjoyusa.com. Zachary Brandt Eventing is located in Northwest Ocala and currently has openings for horses in training and for sale. Zach has experience riding multiple horses up through the advanced and four-star level, as well as teaching riders and horses of all ages and levels. In addition to teaching lessons, Zach is also available for clinics as well as coaching at competitions. You can find Zach on Facebook and on Instagram. Welcome to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the Venning Radio Show and presented to us by Horse Trailer Post. And we have the Laws Cubed Squared. 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 Cubed would be three. Yeah. Yeah. Cubed is three. We can I make it cubed if you want. It'll just take me <laughs> We're just, I'm just so joyful that I have both of y'all and I can see your faces because I'm used to seeing you all the time and I don't see you anymore ever. So how are you making it through this pandemic? Are y'all hanging in there all right? Yeah, we're hanging in, you know, doing the same as everybody else, staying at home. Staying but, at home, uh, doing your own thing. Yeah, but I think... Uh, I think we're very fortunate, really, that we, like you guys, we we have a farm and we're able to uh, ride our horses and keep ourselves busy and um, stay amused. And uh, so I think uh, compared to a lot of people, we're we're really, really fortunate. Yeah, and I know, um, Mrs. Leslie, you've been finding out what homeschooling's like, huh? Yes, I've turned into a part-time teacher for sure. But I got to say, the school's... We're very lucky we're in such an age of technology, aren't we, that, that they were able to do that. And the school's done a really good job. But I do have to be there 
it's now taking up probably half my day because obviously technology has its share of problems and it's all new and there's glitches and this and that. So I've, I've been there. I, I, I don't do Spanish or STEM because I'm no good at those two things, but everything else I try to be there for. So I, I do Spanish and STEM. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Do you do it with an English accent? <laughs> I like it. He wouldn't even know what STEM yeah. stood for. <laughs> I was, I'm not sure. Is that like STEM of a plant, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so but I know what Spanish stands for. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> he calls it Mexican. Well, I mean, <laughs> to be it. fair, that's yeah. what they speak. So it's good. As long as you can go down and be able to order lunch. That's probably all that really matters. Yeah. Right. Right. Now hey. that's cool. Hey, I know this whole pandemic thing has, uh, Le- Mrs. Leslie, you've been really on top of it from the very beginning. I remember seeing you um, March 14th, specifically at the Ocala Horse Trials. And, you know, we were all getting geared up for what we knew was coming, but you were already, you were like way ahead of the, the curve, if we're going to use that word that we all use now. Um, so how are, how are you dealing with that? I know you were a bit frustrated, as was I, for a lot of people not taking it seriously and, and just not really listening to what should be, be done. And I think a lot of us are doing it, but there's still those that are the rogue people. But, you know, what, what was your insight into, into that? How did you have that intuition? Well, it's actually a really funny story. It was, it started back in the rocking horse before Ocala. So I guess that was probably two weeks before. I don't know the date when the last rocking horse was, but owners of ours, the ones that own my little novice horse, they were very kind to me because I was going on the Sunday just on my own. They had offered to lend me their truck and trailer. So I didn't have to take the big rig. And they had this lovely new truck. And when I got in the truck, the first thing that happened was um, I almost got squished because they're very small in the trucks these days. You know, the seats just adjust. And the second thing that happened is they had their serious radio on very, very loud. And it was a new truck. And I could not figure out how to change this radio channel or even turn it down. And they had it on a news station, serious news station. And I couldn't work it out. So I was forced for the hour and 15 minutes to listen to this news channel. And I got to tell you, by the time I got out of the truck, I was terrified about this virus. And this was the first I'd really heard about it. So whatever, two or three weeks before that Ocala. And I got out of the truck and it was really funny. I went to walk my course. I was there alone. And I remember stumbling upon um, Joe Meyer and, and Bobby Meyerhoff. And I said, guys, we're going to be wearing masks soon to the grocery stores, you know. And and they said, really, do you think so? And I said, well, I don't know, but I've listened to this news station for an hour and 15 minutes. And I said, this is big deal. This is a big deal and it's coming. And that's kind of when it really hit me. I would have never known if I hadn't been locked in a truck that I couldn't change the channel. But right. that's when it first hit me. And then... You know, I, I, it. we say we're lucky and we are lucky and everything, but this is a big deal. I mean, I thought the event of my lifetime was 9-11. You know, I thought that was going to be what we all have things that defined our lifetime. And I, I would have thought that was it. Um, this is, it's a really big deal, a really big deal. And I guess... I can't wait for it to be over with. I don't know how it's going to, I think we're all starting to see now that it is going to be a new reality. It's going to be a before virus and an after virus reality. And I don't think any of us really know what that new reality is going to look like. I don't think it's going to be the same personally. No, Um, I agree. Yeah. I'm, but I'm, I'm trying to listen to you because I remember that day you told me the same thing. And I remember distinctly saying to you, you're being ridiculous. It's going to be fine. (laughs) And obviously I am like a prophet because I got that dead wrong. (laughs) So now every time that you say something to me and I'm like, oh, she's just blowing this out of proportion. I'm like, eh, she's probably right again. I'll just shut up and listen. Uh, Well, 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 it has been known. (laughs) Blown out of proportion before now. So you're. You don't mind it some of the time. I I really understand where you're coming from, John. I really do. <laughs> oh, I appreciate God. that. 
You well, know, I know. I'm worried about our governor. To you know, it's back to Rick. I'm. I our governor worries me. Sometimes I I watch the other states and I'm like, why can't we have that guy? You know, I we haven't even. You know, Leslie and I have applied for the PPP, and you know, the the country's run out of money already again, and we're still waiting on that. And and I look every night at the Marion County rates. And we're still on the rise in a right. big way. In a big way, we're still on the rise. And yet the governor wants to just open the beaches and do this. And, and when he said about the schools, I emailed the school right away. And I was like, please, don't even think about that. You know, it, right. it's just crazy talk. And what's the point of opening schools, you know, a month before school stops? I've got, you know, one of Liam's teachers is pregnant. And, you know, they don't need to be going back to that for the sake of a month. It's just, uh, I'm worried about the governor. I totally agree. I think we all, you know, it all comes down to leadership and, and what you look at and how you do it. Yes, we all want the, the world to open back up, but we need to open it back up in a, in a very strategic way. And until we can come up with, I, I kind of made this joke that as soon as we have a, a, a test, it's like a pregnancy test that we can spit on and it turns a color pretty fast. This is going to be very hard to get our, a grip around, and we really need to think about it and phase ourselves back in strategically and safely because this isn't going away. And usually it's the second wave that really gets a lot of people, and we're only in the first wave. Yeah. So one thing I just wanted to talk about that's incredibly important and serious here is I know – for all of us, we get stuck at home and we get a little bit stir crazy and we're trying to find things to do, but you guys have found a really exciting hobby. Um, I believe every night, practically, you get on Nintendo Switch and challenge Chris Barnard. Isn't What's his name? Baldy or King Baldy? Or... <laughs> Don't yeah. say that. Yeah, no, Flatter yeah. him. Yeah, Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris's uh, name is Baldy, yes. Yeah, yeah, which I think is awesome. Um, and you guys play Mario Kart and um, Leslie, Mr. Law, you've become, uh, improved. I would say it sounds to me like you've gotten the award for most improved Mario Kart driver. I'm not sure about that. I mean, um, as you know, I'm not, I'm not a big one for video games, so I've had, uh, very little experience and, um, I still end up finishing last every night no. of, uh, of the nine contestants. No, that's he's really improved. He's really improved. And he's not going to want to say this, but he's getting it, to the point where the other night he threw the controller down and walked out of the house. So that tells you how involved he's getting in the Right. Game. So. So you yeah. don't have to look at the controller anymore to see which buttons to push. I, no. I understood that. That's uh, good. They are getting better. I'm getting better. But the, the thumb and the fingers, they, they all sort of get, uh, yeah, they get a bit mixed up. And yeah, I go, I go in the wrong direction. And, but He's been fourth. It looks so, like I'm going to get a lot more practice anyway. So who knows? Right. So you just missed out on the medal in fourth place. And who would have ever thought that Mr. Leslie Law, the Athens Olympics gold medalist, would be competitive and get frustrated and throw the Wii controller <laughs> on the ground when he didn't win. <laughs> it really was awful, John. I had to, like, uh, it, was awful. Yeah, it, was, it was awful. It was awful. I was like, can you please not have a strop? We're in quarantine here together. This is supposed to be fun. This is, so honestly, I had to be last a few times. Just so. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So you, uh, you own a couple girl. to keep them happy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. that's great. That's I great. I almost All right. called up the other eight people and we're like, can you take it easy on Leslie for a couple nights? Because <laughs> I don't want him having a straw. It's a bit like when we go eventing and I purposely get time folks on the cross country. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie can stay ahead of me. Oh uh, yeah, I know you do that a lot. You're always willing to to lose the competition for your wife. I've noticed Absolutely. that as you prance yeah. around with yeah. ribbons. I've been yeah. so many. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back with you. Cool. Oh, perfect. Special thanks to our contributing sponsor, Black Horse Farm, fox hunting and eventing. Located in Area 4, Black Horse Farm and the Mossback Hounds in Elizabeth, Illinois, welcome active USEA eventers to come join them for an introductory fox hunt free of charge. 
Ride with Master of the Hounds, Tony Leahy, and the Mossback Hounds over some of the finest hunt territory in the entire country. For further details, visit Black Horse Farm on Facebook to arrange for a ride sponsor. When I compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That means being the best version of me I can, both mentally and physically. That's why CrossFit Antics is my home gym. Coach Vilma creates a fun, welcoming environment that encourages athletes from beginners to seasoned veterans to be their best. New to CrossFit? No problem. Coach V will modify the workout to suit you in a fun, challenging way. Be sure to mention the John and Rick Show for a special discount. ERA of North America is the voice of the rider. To assimilate and leverage the collective voice of North American riders, equine professionals, and owners, ERA of North America works to improve the overall safety, welfare, visibility, and growth of the sport. Be sure to go to www.eraofna.com and jump in. You can compare, you can contrast, but in the end, there's only one ultra-premium horse feed. Pro Elite Horse Feed. Its nutrition lock formulas ensure quality. Its advanced amino acid profiles maximize performance. Its regulated starch and sugar levels mean confident calorie sourcings, and its superior digestibility leads to an overall healthier horse. When it comes to feeding your champion horse, there is no competition. There's Pro Elite Horse Feed. For more information, visit www.proelitehorsefeed.com. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show brought to you by Horse Trailer Pros. And we're really excited because we are still joined by Leslie and Leslie Law. So thanks for sticking around, guys, and spending a little more time with us. Yeah, thanks for coming back. No problem. So I want to I want to say something real quick. I know we have some important stuff to talk about, but when we were talking about Mrs. Leslie, I had to share with her a couple weeks ago, I had this very vivid dream, and she was in it. And Boy, are you sure this is safe for air? <laughs> it, is. it is. It's rated G. Oh, okay, so, good. Go ahead. Then. So she was actually flying a plane and I was a passenger. And we were like flying and like going through ravines. And then we we're coming up to some place and we we're supposed to land. And I've, I have like 100 hours in a small aircraft. And I was like, what are you doing? You, she goes, just be quiet. I know what I'm doing. And she literally landed this plane and then parked it like really efficiently. And then she popped up the top and she said, we need fuel. And then she got out and ran out. And that was part of my dream. Was, but she went on to go on. But she was obviously leading. I, I'm believing in her. So she, I let her take the controls. And so I just, from that, now believe in Leslie Law Misses. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, and I, I think that's a... <clears throat> A very strange dream, and uh, I'm not sure I'm happy that you shared it with us. But um, do you want to hear it, my it, dream? Yeah, <laughs> no, I do not want to hear your dream. I know okay. you absolutely okay. not. Um, but what it does sort of bring to mind is that Leslie is a good leader, and because of that, I was actually really fortunate. She's on the cross country safety subcommittee, and I put her in charge of one of the groups, one of the task force to look into the minimum eligibility requirement and rider licensing, right, Leslie? Yeah, and that's very true. You did put me in charge because I got a text message at 10.15 at night one night from John Halling saying, can you please lead this task force? And I thought, I'm not answering him. It's 10.15 and no, I'm not going to do this. And the next morning there was an email in my inbox saying, and Leslie's agreed to do this, and yep. so she's going to be leading this up. And I thought, oh, no. Yeah, that's so how you I'm do it. I'm very happy to be doing it. Very happy. See, um, Mike, it's a good segue for leadership. Yeah, I yes, knew what you were doing. Well done. Um, so why don't you just tell everybody a little bit, Leslie, about what your recommendations were and what's going forward to the USEA? Okay, well... Obviously, there's been so much talk about safety, and we are all so invested in it for our sports, for our people, for our horses, for the future of everything. And it's an ongoing thing. And it has, you know, we get a lot of talk about the frangible fences, and that is so important. But again, 
safety, just like in every aspect of the world, there's so many layers to it. It's not one thing. It's a multitude of things that have to be worked on. And so this rider licensing is hopefully going to be a big step towards the right direction as well. Because when I looked into the current, um, as far as qualifications, we're talking about here to upgrade and to do the levels. Um, I had never actually read them before. Like as far as looking at the actual rules, I had never read them. And when I read them, I was really, really shocked to find that they are very, very specifically driven towards a professional type person and a good professional at that. And yet they are the regulations that everybody falls into. And we know that of everybody, a very, very tiny portion is actually a good professional, right? It's a, it's a great amateur sport and a huge amateur sport. And there isn't that many professionals, and yet our regulations are designed for professionals. So that's what my group looked into, how to make it safer for people to upgrade. Um, and so that's what we've been doing. And we're putting it forward now to basically tightening up um, the requirements for you to upgrade. And I looked at it both as, from, yes, the safety feature for the number of runs, but also the quality of runs. Because I think the number is always important, but it's also quality control. And you're, you're controlling the quality of our product is the riding, right? And the horses. That's our product. And you hear all around the world, they talk about quality control of their product. Well, our, our product is the riding and the horses. So we have to look at the quality control of that. And it's very loose the way it is right now and very easy, quite frankly, to upgrade. Um, and so that's what we're looking into now. And, and to do that, we looked at a great, a good range of, of successful horses and riders to study what they were doing. And most of them were doing a lot more than what our current regulations dictate. So we kind of went through there and it's being passed on now to the larger safety. And I think that's probably the biggest point, Leslie, you're making is, is while those were in there and we were talking about what the minimum requirements were, I, I know as a professional, I might have a young horse that's five that's done more than it, more than what's recommended to move on to the next level. But I'm like, there's no way he, that one needs to run another three novices or either four novices before I do something different with him. Um, and I think, that is the kind of thinking that sometimes isn't transcended down the ranks. And that's what we have to, I think, implement to bring it with the quality of the rides um, into making it an effective uh, rule that you're working on. Exactly. And I'm, I'm hoping that with what we're putting through is I'm hoping we're going to hit a lot of boxes. We're going to hit the numbers. The numbers have to be bigger as far as number of events to qualify. We're going to hit the quality. The quality is always common sense, better quality, better result, safer result. And three, like you said, the education, there's, you know, you know that, you know what your horse needs to run, but there's a lot of people that are looking to the rules for education. They think if that's the rule, then that's what you need, you know, and, and it makes perfect sense, right? Um, and so a little bit is educating people too, that, you know, you need to do better. You need to do more. And if you don't know, we're going to hopefully this will help them a bit. Right. No, it's I think it's I'm really, really proud of the whole group and particularly you that, you know, we came out and I, you know, there's four or five things that have come out of that committee as recommendations to try to help lessen the chance of accidents and, you know, improve safety in the sport going forward. So really well done. And thank you for taking it on, even though you didn't actually have a choice because I just made you do it. <laughs> he had an auto reply. Yes. Yeah. I knew if you didn't answer immediately, that's was going to be a yes. And you and Sarah both didn't reply immediately. And that's why I sent it at 10, 15 at night. Cause I knew you wouldn't. And then I just said, yes. So Sarah Broussard led the other group and, um, I can't thank you both enough for doing that. Um, and so just a little bit of a transition then, Mr. Law, you have a really exciting group of horses. Actually, you both do, Leslie and Leslie. You guys both have a really good group of horses, but I feel like, Leslie, we've kind of left you sitting over on the other side of the couch there and haven't let you talk at all about your stuff. So Very um, 
I know you look happy. You look yeah. happy, but you know, you guys obviously have a, a great string of horses, both of you. And obviously none of us know where we're going or what we're doing, but you know, I'm a little curious. You've got splash, right. And, and he's looking great whenever I get to see little videos of him jumping. And, um, then so, John, while you say that, just so we can help people that don't know who splash is, can we give splash's name? He's the uh, horse that was going to win Kentucky this year. <laughs> that, that's, that's the big man. gray horse with all the white oh, Voltaire de Trey. Yeah, and then you've got another really exciting advanced horse, the big gray. What's his name? First class. First class, right. Yeah. So if we get to compete ever again this year, what are your hopes for those two horses? Where do you think you might go? You think you're going to take a crack at Fair Hill Five Star with uh, Voltaire de Trey? Oh, most most definitely. He would um, he would go to Fair Hill. Yeah, if we – if. You know, if all this gets sorted out, um, I think, uh, and I think fortunately for, for that horse now, I mean, you know, he, he wouldn't have to have, um, you know, a lot of events prior to it in order, in order for me to feel ready and prepared for it. You know, he went, he went to, uh, uh, Land Rover, Kentucky last year and, um, he, had, he, he did manage to get a run in at, uh, Rocking Horse and Red Hills in, in, you know, at the beginning of the year, and um, he is—he he is just a fantastic, awesome cross-country horse. So, um, you know, I think uh, I could—I could go to Fair Hill off off uh, minimum runs. Um, we're very lucky now in that we gallop over at the Jockey Club. I know exactly how to get him extremely fit without without having to run him. So, um, Fair Hill is definitely uh, the you know the, the goal for that horse. For sure. And uh, then the, the other horses, would you be thinking jockey club then? Yeah. You know, the first class horse, he's just, he's just, you know, he was sort of, well, he had a one, he had the advance to Chattahoochee last year as, uh, as his first, as his first run. And then he ran at rocking horse and also at red Hills as well. Um, you know, he is younger. He is, he's, he's just of nine years of age this year. Um, but he's looking, he's looking a really exciting horse and, um, you know, jockey club, uh, four star long would be very much on the cards for him as well. Uh, how many, how many runs do you think you'd have to have with that horse? To yeah. Get that you know, that's, you know, that, you know, that, that would be a, that would Question. be a little bit more difficult, you know, because he has, he doesn't have the experience, um, you know, in, in the perfect world, you know, you'd, you'd want a minimum of three runs in him and I'd probably like four really. But, um, you know, I mean, yeah, the jockey club would be the aim, but being a younger horse, he would be a horse. I'd also have to see, you know, how, what we could do before that. And if it wasn't right, he, he would have to wait till next year. And that's right. all there is to it. Right. Well, and, and to that point, so the jockey club's a national championship this year. It's moving from Fair Hill and then, Bear Hill is now being billed as the Maryland Maryland Five Star. Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, I keep calling it Fair Hill. I got to change that. Good, good yeah, catch, Rick. Um, well, well think, you know, I think the Jockey Club is is probably, you know, like sitting there in November is is, you know, looking a really good date. Good. <laughs> quite honestly. Yeah, yeah, uh, it could be. It could be the first event of the season. Who knows? It, it, <laughs> and, you know, it might it may it may even be attractive to the Europeans. Right. Um, if they if they can't, you know, you know, their their season, you know, their season pretty much is over by mid October. And uh, you know, and if, if they can't if they can't get events in and stuff, that that could be something they might think about. Well, it's a good point, especially with the Olympics next year now. Correct. Because it'll yeah. be a qualifier. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, guys, I really appreciate you both coming on and taking the time to join us. Um, super helpful and uh, with getting, giving us all the information on the frangible stuff. Fun to catch up with you guys on the horses. Um, and once we get out of this quarantine, we'll have to have you guys both into the studio and do something in person. I can't wait. Thanks, know, you, guys. Haven't, you haven't asked me what I miss most. What do you, what miss, do you most? miss most? It's your cooking, John. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. John, great seeing you. I'm sorry it's this way. We can't wait to see y'all in person. Great all to right. see you guys. See you guys Take soon. care. All right. See you soon. We'll be right back after these uh, commercial break. 
The equestrian life has big highs, heartbreaking lows, and so many moments of self-doubt. From CCI 5 Star to Starter, every rider needs a support system and a cheering section. A care package filled with equestrian goodies can be the perfect way to celebrate, congratulate, or commiserate. Let Present Pony do the work so you don't have to miss an opportunity to express your love and support. Summit Joint Performance, the injectable joint supplement used by numerous international and Olympic riders, invites you to experience the winning Summit difference. Made of all natural ingredients, Summit increases mobility and comfort. Win your class with Summit Joint Performance. ERA of North America is the voice of the rider. To simulate and leverage the collective voice of North American riders, equine professionals, and owners, ERA of North America works to improve the overall safety, welfare, visibility, and growth of the sport. Be sure to go to www.eraofna.com and jump in. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show the voice of the eventing radio show and presented by horse trailer pros. Hey, John, we're in the fourth um, segment here and we're going to be going out to see Buck. Tell us about your trip and what happened going out there. Yeah. So just before the stay at home order came into effect here in Florida, I was able to get over to Buck Davidson's farm. He's actually just a mile and a half down the road from me. And uh, I thought it might be fun just to let everybody take a little tour of his place. He showed me around the barn. There weren't many people around uh, because of the social distancing that was in place at the time. So I got to kind of stand back in the middle of the aisle and um, talk to him and then have him show me some of his horses, which I thought for those of us who are stuck in apartments or not able to get out to see our horses at boarding stables, it might be fun to get to see Buck and his horses. And it was actually really nice to see how much those horses like Buck and how much Buck loves his horses. So let's go check it out. I'm excited. Let's go. I'm joined by Buck Davidson today. Um, and Buck, thanks for letting me come out. We just wanted to talk a little bit about, obviously, everybody's dealing with this quarantine and what you guys are doing here, um, how it's affected you, and, and sort of what your plans are. Yeah, I think I'm like everybody else that uh, we don't really know. Um, just trying to sort of stay away from everybody and... Um, try to keep the horses in light work. Obviously, we don't want any accidents. We don't have, want anybody going to the hospital or, you know, affecting people that are really sick. And so we're just, you know, riding them around on the flat, doing some Cavaletti stuff, um, you know, not doing much jumping. Um, but the horse is getting extra grooming. As you can see here, Jack is shining like crazy. And uh, the guys here are doing a great job. And um, He's keeping his social distance. He did come over and say hi for a minute, but more into his hay now. Right. So, um, so the horses you said are going to stay in work for now. Um, do you have a you know a, a thought as to what's going to happen the rest of the season? I know obviously nobody knows, but you have, your, you have <clears throat> got instincts on anything. Yeah. Well, at first I you know kind of thought, oh well, you know we we'll be back by June, and then now I think then you start thinking August, and then you start watching the TV, and they you know they say well opening day is going to be this day and then they start saying well maybe opening day will be this day if we have a season and so then you start to worry about <clears throat> everything is is there anything going to happen but i guess i'm sort of an optimistic person probably stupidly optimistic but I like to think that things will get back to going and um you know at some point i think we're going to have to get going life has to keep going on and move forward and um Hopefully they'll find a, a cure for this thing or at least slow it down. And um, But right now we've all got to do our part and stay far away from each other. And uh, the best place to be for us is at the barn. We, you know, we have a, we're so lucky here in Florida. We have <clears throat> lots of land and um, so we can keep, keep going quietly. And so, like you said, you're in Florida right now. Do you plan to stay here for a while? Or are you still thinking of going north or is that all really up in the air? Yeah, I think it's all up in the air, you know, like my, um, you know, when I go up to Pennsylvania, I'm at my dad's and obviously we have our group here and we, we sat down and talked about it, all of us together to stay in our group. We don't go out and, you know, intermingle with other people. And so 
I think we'd rather keep that group as small as we can. We're not, you know, we're not having shipping lessons. I'm not doing anything. We're, you know, spending a lot of time practicing Aubrey swimming in the pool. And so I pretty much go from my house to uh, to the barn and uh, back to the house again. So, um, you know, I guess things are up in the air, but as of now, we're going to stay here in Florida for a bit. And your dad's up north? Dad's up north, yep. And I call and check on mom and dad every day. And um, they're yeah, both he, good and healthy and staying away from people. Thank God, knock on wood, they're, uh, they're in good shape. They're, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, which is a rare thing for either one of them. <laughs> but uh, the uh, dad says he goes from the house to the barn and back down to the house. And um, mom just kind of is fixing up her house and messing around there. So, um, yeah, everybody's trying to do their part. And I think is, is, if everybody can do their part, hopefully uh, we can get ahead of this thing and, um, and move forward. Cool. Um, well, you had offered to maybe show us a couple of the horses, so maybe let's take a peek at, at who you got in the barn here. Yeah, we have some we have some nice ones right here. We have uh, Jack, my style. Come here, Jack. Come over here, buddy. So, just for the viewers, tell us who he is, what he's done. Jack, my style. He um, he went to Kentucky last year, and I fell off my first one. Um, but he was I think he was fourth at Fairhill. Um, I had a crashing fall with him at the gates at Burley last year, but he's come back and uh, the infamous Burley gates. Burley gates, yep. But um, he's uh, he's a very nice horse. He may have been second in the rocking horse. He's uh, yeah, he was due to go to Kentucky. He's very fit and well, and uh, you know, was really looking forward to this this spring with him. And uh, but anyway, he's enjoying his easier time. Uh, <clears throat> this is. Uh, Victor BZ in here. He's just hanging out. This is uh, this is the horse I was really had all the hopes and dreams for the spring. He's been going fantastic. He's won everything. Um, he's finally filled out to a, a real horse. This is a, a horse called Carlevo. Oh um, yeah, Carlevo. Didn't you have? Did you see the one you had a Buccalo when I, think, I went yep, over there? Yeah. Yep, he's only eight then, and yep. um, he's. Uh, you know, he's really come into himself. He went very well at Blenheim last year. Um, he's been, I mean, he's very good in all three phases now. And um, I was really, would have been very, very disappointed to not have a top five, top three finish in Kentucky this spring. Yeah, it's a nice um, horse. I've yeah. always loved this one. And uh, he's definitely, uh, you know, he relaxes quite easily. Him and Jack, they're, they're happy enough to just <laughs> chill out there. Pretty low stress horses. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty chill. Pretty chill. Uh, here's Copper Beach here. I think he's banging his head against the wall thinking, what are we doing? And uh, he's, he's been going quite well. Um, his last outing at, at Ocala, I thought that this might happen. Things get shut down. I was hoping maybe Kentucky would happen. So I tried to throw him in the intermediate to see if I could get him to run. And um, you know, he went very well there. Um, he was also feeling like he was really good for Kentucky this spring, um, but he's not, he's here. And, he's here. Uh, you know, but thankfully all are all healthy. We'd like to talk to you on the camera there. Sean. You're supposed to keep social distance, buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's been keeping plenty of social distance. I guess he's pretty It's bad. a shame your horses don't like people and aren't friendly. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, anyway, he's, he's good. Um, this horse is, uh, a uh, really nice young horse called Errol Gobi, um, and uh, he, had a, he had a little wind out this winter, um, but he's been uh, he's been going fantastic. He's uh, you know he's. So you said he had a wind he, operation. He had, yep, he had a Llewellyn procedure. Yep. about a month ago. You know, did you ever meet Doctor Llewellyn? I did. I yeah, went, me too. Went to Canada and and helped him. Sat yeah, on, sat he's, on the horse. He's to, a cool guy. Do it, and um, there's Gobi's little wind up right there. Thing there, Randy. Kobe. That's right. right. Yeah. All right. Got and, that. Uh, Pretty cool. So that all went well, and he's in good shape. Yep. He's in great shape. He's uh, you know, just looking for something to do. It's kind of that's the one sort of I guess silver lining <laughs> in this is the horses that needed a little bit of time. Suddenly it's like, eh, whatever. You can have all the time you need. Exactly. And this is a nice young horse that I actually, I actually bought that. Um, hopefully, going to uh, get some people in on. His name is. His name is Cam. Apparently, the mic touched his head. He hasn't been here long he enough. He hasn't yet. been here long enough, but he's a thoroughbred horse that um, I got through Jill Hennenberg. And um, he's, I think he's just going to be a superstar. He's done a few preliminaries with me now. and Very, yeah, very, very nice type. Him. Yeah. And then here's the, the 
Holly Jacks calls him um, her boyfriend. This is a very, very nice young horse that just did his first preliminary. Um, called, he's a six-year-old called Serafino D. And uh, I think, I have high hopes for this one. It's a, I think it might be a superstar. It's and and what's he? He is uh, German. I got him, as I've got most of these from, from J.P. Sheffield. Yep. Um, and uh, Ka uh, Kathleen Kuchka and uh, Carl Siegel. Um, went in together on him and uh it's a very very exciting young horse he just did his first preliminary the other day and um yeah very high hopes for him and then uh the other one that's maybe enjoying his rest i think could be as good a horse as i've ever had this is a young horse called uh we call him rollo um called coolie Candyman. he was second in the jockey club last year and two stars done a couple intermediates um it's uh it's a really, really, really good horse. He's just a seven-year-old. Um, but as you can see, he's beautiful. He's sweet. Um, and he's owned by the same family that owns Carlito. And uh, I'm very, very excited about him. And I'm just really looking forward to having a really good spring season and have a really nice advanced horse in the in the spring. But um, anyway, he's uh, he won't do him any harm to be getting some extra training and, uh, you know, get his get it, everything up to speed cool awesome well i appreciate the uh tour and meeting the horses i know everybody watching is probably just jonesing to be out at a farm and seeing some horses so this may be some good uh, therapy for everybody who's having to do their social distancing so thanks for your time no question and these horses they uh i'm not sure they totally get the social distancing thing here but they uh, but everybody stay safe and uh hopefully we'll see everybody soon all right thanks buck thanks john Special thanks to our contributing sponsor, Black Horse Farm, fox hunting and eventing. Located in Area 4, Black Horse Farm and the Mossback Hounds in Elizabeth, Illinois, welcome active USEA eventers to come join them for an introductory fox hunt free of charge. Ride with Master of the Hounds, Tony Leahy, and the Mossback Hounds over some of the finest hunt territory in the entire country. For further details, visit Black Horse Farm on Facebook to arrange for a ride sponsor. Jump for Joy USA has what you need for your private farm or recognized competition. Our jumps are no maintenance, easy to move, and affordable. No scraping or painting necessary. We offer jump stands, wings, fillers, water trays, and more. Poles are wood-filled and available in four weights and lengths. And we now offer octagonal poles. Our cross-country portables and brush jumps are extremely useful and have been used for training by the British eventing team since 1990. Easy to move from the arena to the field and no tractor required, so you can change your setup often. We ship coast to coast in the USA and Canada. Visit our website, jumpforjoyusa.com. You can compare, you can contrast, but in the end, there's only one ultra premium horse feed Pro Elite Horse Feed. Its nutrition lock formulas ensure quality. Its advanced amino acid profiles maximize performance. Its regulated starch and sugar levels mean confident calorie sourcings, and its superior digestibility leads to an overall healthier horse. When it comes to feeding your champion horse, there is no competition. There's Pro Elite Horse Feed. For more information, visit www.proelitehorsefeed.com. When I compete, I demand the best out of my horses and myself. That means being the best version of me I can, both mentally and physically. That's why CrossFit Antics is my home gym. Coach Vilma creates a fun, welcoming environment that encourages athletes from beginners to seasoned veterans to be their best. New to CrossFit? No problem. Coach V will modify the workout to suit you in a fun, challenging way. Be sure to mention the John and Rick Show for a special discount. Welcome back to the John and Rick Show, the voice of the eventing radio show, brought to you as always by Horse Trailer Pros. And we are really excited because we have Olympic gold medalist and uh, general hero to eventers everywhere, David O'Connor. David, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's great. I'm sorry we're having to do it this way. I was looking forward to you know sitting down on your studio, but uh, we all have the things we're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have you in once we're allowed. We'll have you into the studio. Don't you worry. <laughs> hey, Rick. Hey, David. How are you doing? Thanks for being on the show. I know we're, like you said, we're all cordoned off, but I think in mentioning we are all three lucky, I think, being uh, on farms and being able to have a little bit more liberty than more, most people 
So that's a good thing. Absolutely. And, and still with our horses and all that kind of stuff, it's, uh, exactly. you know, we're in that, in that part, we're pretty spoiled. Um, uh, I, I just can't imagine being in an apartment in New York city, you know, it would be a hard, it would, that would be a hard thing. Um, but you know, it's something we all have to do. We have to all take it seriously. I agree with you. And I think that's been going around a little bit. I get a, a bit frustrated with some of the Facebook postings, but I guess that's just a, a natural thing anyway. So, uh, with, exactly. with that being said, I wanted to congratulate you. You're on the cover with Custom Made of the Chronicle for the Kentucky Issue Week, because obviously we needed some great star to take over for what would have been the preview by Jimmy Wofford. So uh, what a great horse, huh? Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was amazing. He's, you know, it's, uh, we just lost him this year, just this summer. Um, you know, at 34 years old, he had a great life. Um, you know, retired at Mrs. Mars's place. Um, but you know, he was just one of those unusual horses. And when the Chronicle called me and asked if they could do a thing on it, you know, cause you know, it's 20 years <laughs> ago that, that, that weekend happened. And, uh, you know, you, you tend to forget the, the <clears throat> intensity of it. And, uh, you know, so I was quite honored that they wanted to remember him. Um, and, uh, I haven't seen the article yet. <laughs> I look forward to seeing it, but um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very honored that they wanted to, to uh, remember him like they did. Yeah, I, I know he was a special, special to your heart. And um, I do know one thing you made mention in that article, because I did, I was able to read it, um, was you talked about galloping up the hill to a big table and <laughs> him jumping the table. And you said in midair, I don't think I'll ever have this feeling again. Absolutely. That was at uh, Over the Walls up in Massachusetts, you know, right. that Torrance used to run. What a wonderful event. And, uh, you know, it was that last year that I rode him and competed him in 2002. And, um, you know, I just remember going up that hill and having him just, you know, explode. Um, sure. You know, just a normal fence, but just explode. And I just, I, you know, it, it's, it's a very true story. I was in the air thinking, you just, that is raw, that raw power you just don't feel again. I mean, it's, it's just pure raw power. Um, and it was, uh, you know, he, he, he did that a lot in badminton and, and places like that. That was such a strength of his. So it was a, it, it was a pretty cool, a pretty cool 10 years of my life. Yeah, he was a pretty amazing horse. I have to say, David, my favorite, everybody has a favorite memory of watching you with custom made. And my favorite memory I love because it's very unique to me and I think I've told you this before, was when you brought him to Kentucky the year that you retired him at Kentucky. And yeah. I was fortunate enough to be stabled right next to him. And he had his head sticking out the door and I didn't know him at all other than watching him on TV um, and seeing him at the events occasionally when I was really lucky. So I walked up as I was walking to my stall to give him a pet and he reached out and bit me as hard as he could <laughs> right, right in the arm. <laughs> And nope. that's exactly hey, what you did when I when I told you you laughed just like you are right now, and you told me that he was allowed to bite me. <laughs> he was allowed. Yeah, he he was his space. His you know he was he had his people, um, and uh, we've had had some great people that I got to partner with. You know, Colleen uh, Roberts and uh, or then Hey Doc now Roberts and uh, Sam Burton, you know, and so he had his people, <laughs> but if you were one of his people at his stall, then yeah, it wasn't going to be, uh, you had to be introduced. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I was not one of his people, but that was all right. I got bit by custom made. That's pretty cool. I'll take it. <laughs> he was fun that weekend, you know, and fun enough later on, he was, he was very, very gentle with kids, with children, you know, we never, uh, when we were with him and, um, the other thing, he was a, a fantastic horse to put to, he was actually our best horse to put somebody that was a beginner with um, uh, somebody that didn't know how to ride. You know, they were like, oh, it's custom made. And, and you were like, oh, you know, we have him ride it. You know, and even people that had just started, you know, they couldn't get him to canter. You couldn't get him to trot. He would just walk. He'd go slower. Um, he had slow <laughs> he, and stop. He was pretty you know, well and, of course, and of course, and I just would bust out laughing my head off. And because uh, you could hop on him and go like Passage or whatever, fly J just and then put the other person back on and he wouldn't trot. And it was, <laughs> I just, I just thought it was the funniest thing. Um, he was a wonderful horse that way. Very, very smart. Very, very, very smart horse. 
Yeah, that's cool. He was he was something special. Yeah. Um, so one of the other things we wanted to just take some time to talk to you about, um, which I haven't prepared you for, so get ready. Um, yes. <laughs> obviously, everybody right now on social media is pretty worked up over this FEI schooling show statement that was made. And so I was hoping maybe you had some insight into it and exactly what it means to us as eventers and you know, they were talking about online dressage shows and how officials couldn't judge them and could competitors ride in them. And, you know, what are you, what are your thoughts on it? And I have a feeling it just needs to be clarified a little bit that it probably isn't as bad as everybody's making it out to be. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's a funny thing. It's been actually going on uh, in the dressage world. It's been played around or asked for, for years. And, you know, obviously for a comp, for an actual competition, it's very hard to, you know, make sure that the it's a level playing field for everybody. Basically, you know, that's the main thing. And so, using these uh, ideas as educational things, absolutely. But it um, and maybe with a score, uh, but not really having, you know, that you're going to get a first place, or maybe there's points that lead on to something else, or some type of rhythm, you rib, rib, uh, ribbon. You know, so I think realistically, what you're talking about, it's a it's a great educational tool. Um, and putting it into fun ways um, to be an educational tool is fantastic. But to turn it into an actual competition that actually means something, I think that it's going to be very hard to make sure that the playing field is level for everybody. And that is the great concern. Um, so, you know, to use this as an educational tool, have top judges judge it. And you get a score, but then there's your score, you know. Um, I think that's a, a great thing. Or a fundraising thing where... I think the one that's out there, the virtual one, is going to be a fundraising thing that um, actually the winner is going to be who raises the most money, not the person who actually scores the best on the dressage test. Um, so th these are the type of things that it's very good for. But for an actual competition, it'd be it's quite difficult um, when you get into looking at it from a, a level playing field side of the equation. So, David, my question is, I think I, I hear all that. I think what's happened in social media is they're spinning off um, what FEI put up as um, unrecognized or unsanctioned shows, meaning even like our schooling shows, the people are interpreting the rule being that we can't even show in schooling shows that aren't um, under FEI rule, um, that we would be, we would be violating that um, rule that they have posted up there about unsanctioned and un uh, managed schooling shows. Yeah, that, and that's that's not the intent or the desire from anybody's point of view. There's a the a relationship with all the national federations from around the world that, you know, their national shows and uh, things like that are are fine. Um, uh, and unrecognized shows are a thing within the USDA and the USEF. Those are all those are all fine. But when you really, if you're talking about prize money, if you're talking about uh, multiple multiple people from different countries, you know, I think I think it's four, if I remember, you know, having people from four that where it turns into a true competition. These are the things that really are the um, are become the issue uh, because then somebody could put up a million dollars for a unrecognized schooling show, and is that really what we want? You know, and um, and that's been tested in courts before, so. Uh, it's not like it's just a, a small thing, not in our discipline, but in other disciplines. Well, I know. And, um, so there's there's no I, there's no desire or even thought process about school league shows or things like that for the FEI to walk into that at all. That's a relationship with the national federations all around the world. And I think to so, point real quick to the point that you're making, I think Max Corcoran had had a little bit of issue with the Invitational, and she obviously this year made it a USEF competition because there was a lot of people wanting to participate in that, and it was getting to be more countries than than she could do by the FEI rule. So, I mean, that's kind of the examples that you're giving, correct? Something Absolutely. like that that goes into it, something bigger. Exactly. It, it, it Those type of things, you know, prize money is a big deal. And, and again, having an international competition and quite a, you know, uh, public one, uh, you know, that it gets into a different world. And there's National Federation rules along the same lines. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you clarifying that for us. And I think, you know, it just sounds to me like it's kind of going along the lines of what 
we've been doing the whole time anyway, and there's ways that people Absolutely. can certainly work around it. So yeah, Absolutely. no, that's great. Um, so David, thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. We do just want to let everybody know that for our next show, we're really excited. We actually have Lucinda Green coming on the show to join us. Um, so that'll be super exciting. And um, then also have John Michael Durr. So we've got two great guests coming up the next time. Thanks everybody for joining us. David, thanks again. And until next time. Thanks, David. My pleasure, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. I'm Rick Wallace. And I have John Holly here with me. Three phases, dressage, cross-country, show jump. And you're out on course and something's going wrong or going right. You know how to react to what they're doing. It was built originally to be a schooling facility, and so everything's set up very conveniently.